guys and girls, we are getting very, very close to what we call the annual white bass run. Sand bass, they call it in a lot of parts of the country, but white bass. And when we call the run, this is exactly why we call it a run, the white bass run up the river to spawn. Now, white bass, when they lay their eggs, they're not like a bluegill or a bass that lays their eggs in beds and then a male comes in and, and uh, fertilizes the eggs. They, they have, their eggs have to tumble, so they have to, uh, they have to lay them in running water of some sort. So what they do is they'll go up into the rivers where the water is running a little bit where those eggs can tumble. And Lake Tenkiller, the Illinois River that makes Lake Tenkiller, is one of the very best and biggest white bass runs anywhere in the United States. People come there by the literal thousands all the time to catch those white bass. Now, you got to catch it right for it to be really good. All over Texas, all of the lakes in Texas, all over Arkansas, Missouri, in Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, all over the south where there's white bass, they go up to the sp in the springtime to spawn in the rivers, the annual white bass run. And uh, usually this will start toward the end of February, early March. You know, it's, a, it's mostly a, a March deal. Sometimes it goes into April, depending on where you are. And it's really dependent upon how much rain you get. The white bass can be absolutely tearing it up, and you can be catching, you know, 100 a day without any problems, and you get a big giant flood and just washes it all out, and it's over. You just can't catch any more at all. And so you really need to get it early in the white bass run as you can. They're a little bit more difficult to catch early in the white bass run because they're going up there to spawn, and just like anything else, the males show up first. But the earlier you can catch it in the white bass run, the better because you don't usually have that muddy water rush down there and the water come up and just blows the whole thing out. So the earlier you can get onto that white bass run, the better. Kind of like we do on largemouth bass, we start trying to find them on the bed before they actually go on the bed. Same situation with white bass. You want to go looking for those fish really early in the run. When the rivers are lower, if you've got three or four or five lakes around where the white bass run up in the river, try to find the one that's got the lowest, the, the water the lowest. Go up there when the water's the lowest. That's when it's the best. You're really better if you can get way up in those rivers where you can just barely get to a lot of places, where you have to worry about hitting shoals and hitting rocks with your motors. That's when it seems to be the best. You want to go where those fish are going to, where they're running to, is exactly what you want to do. I like to look for bends, that, where a bend comes around and just you just clear on the other side of the bend, just before you go into the bend where the water is coming down the river. I look for, look for those places that's on the on the inside, where the river's gonna sweep around this way, on the inside, some of those places right in there, where that water sort of humps up. <coughs> those schools will school in there and congregate in there. Also, as you go ahead and the river makes the bend, the same thing on the other side, except that, not the outside, but the inside of it. Those are the places I wanna stop my boat and look. Now, a lot of places in the river you can get in there and troll. You can troll with a lot of baits, like little crankbaits, like little square bill crankbaits, like this little lucky strike right here. Uh, a smoothie is a good trolling bait. You can take this boat and just get in the river and troll until you find them. Once you find them, you'll start stop and start casting for them. These are good trolling baits right here. A bait that you can get behind your boat, just put a couple rods out, drive up and down that river until you find the fish. Now, they're gonna move up that river as, as the spawn goes on. So you might find them one day and the next day they may be a mile on further up the river. So keep that in mind. Now, once you are able to get these fish where they're spawning, that's where you can hammer them. That's when you want to find those little bitty spots. And listen to me, I've been on the Illinois River a lot above 10 killer and be catching fish just cast after cast after cast. And boats be eight or 10 boats around me, almost in casting distance, not hardly getting a bite, just catching a fish every now and then. So it's critical to find those little bitty tiny spots. And they're gonna be gravel spots where they, they like to lay their eggs on and rub on. They are gonna be gravel spots and they're gonna usually be just before or just after a point. You'll find them in some of the straightaways if the straightaway is a short straightaway. In other words, it's a short straightaway in between two bends. But those bends are what you're gonna be looking for. Now, there's a lot of baits that I fish with when I get up there. And I've kind of laid out a few of them right here. They're very, very similar baits. When those fish are spawning, the bigger type baits that you're catching them trolling with are probably not gonna do nearly as good. You can catch them on them, but you're a lot better off if you move down to small baits critical to move to small baits. Now, here's one of my favorite right here. Just take a little tiny spinner bait. 
This is a little crappie magic bait by Lucky Strike. It's just a little tiny spinner bait. That's all it is. Just a little tiny spinner bait. It'll catch crappie too, but it's really good at catching the white bass. White and chartreuse are going to be your best two colors. Another thing is a marabou jig. This is a horsehead jig right here. A little marabou jig, and these are my two colors that I really rely on: fluorescent redhead with white marabou, fluorescent redhead with uh, with with chartreuse marabou. The reason I like marabou for those white bass is if you really get into them, you're going to catch. 50, 75, 100, 150 white bass in a day's time. Uh, you can fish a marabou a lot. You're going to fish rubber on there. Fish rubber on there, you're going to go through a lot of soft plastic during the course of a day. So you can put a little curly tail on there, white curly tail, chartreuse curly tail. But this is the two best colors. For some reason, fluorescent red heads work better than any other color head up there. White and chartreuse. Now, the other thing that I like to do, another little square build, and little tiny crankbaits. By the way, the, the, the bait's like, this is an old Bayou Boogie right here. A lot of you don't even know what a Bayou Boogie is, but this is a Bayou Boogie. This is another one of those baits that's real good to troll with. And uh, any of your lipless crankbaits that are shad colored, white color looking, are good to troll with. So this is, this is a good one right here to use. Uh, going back to these little baits, now, you know, you can use the marabou jigs like I talked about. But here's another thing that we've got to do doing in the last few years where after those white bass, we do it all with spinning gear, six or eight pound test lines, all you need, a light spinning rod, and you will have an absolute ball catching these sand bass or white bass. But here's something that we're going to. We're going to these little tiny minnow baits. This is a, a pre-rigged bait. It's already got the head in it. Comes in a little package. It's a, it's a little Bass Pro Shop bait is what this is right here. I got these at Bass Pro. And uh, it's just a little minnow bait, and it's got this, this is a little guard on there. Be sure to take that guard off. That's, guard, that's a hook guard. Be sure to take that off. But that, you just attach it to the front, use it on a little small, and this little tail's going to wiggle in the water. Here's another pre-rigged bait right here. This particular bait is a Lucky Spike Strike bait in the Ranowski brand. That's a Lucky Strike bait. And again, it's a little pre-rigged bait. It's, again, got the jig already built into it, so you just tie the thing on. Just like tying your horse head jig on, your old stump jumper jigs on. You can do right there and tie that on. You want to use minnow type colors. You want to use minnow type colors. Now another one that I really like to use a lot, and I think I've picked up about everything, is the little, this is a little swimming minnow by Lucky Strike. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit larger bait, you can see, than what those other baits are. And what I do on that, I'll use these little small jig heads either a diamond jig head or this little teardrop head. And you come in here and you just simply, you simply wind those on up like such. And there you have it right there. Now you want to make sure when you rig these jigs that your tail is always facing downward. Your tail is always facing downward. This is going to have great action in the water. You put that on a jig head, you can change colors real, real easily. You can get the pre-rigged ones like I was showing or go with this right here. Uh, a chartreuse head is a good one. I would prefer to have fluorescent red head. A white head is good to use on these too. Just use a regular white head. But uh, again, these, these little swimming minnows come, I don't know, eight or ten to a pack in a little old pack like this. You can use various size jig heads. You want to always remember that those fish are facing into the current. Power poles are real essential if you're fishing in the river or anchor or tying to trees or something because once you find a little honey hole, you can catch 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 fish without moving your boat. And it's critical to make the same cast over and over and over and over. So you want to search for those fish. One of the best ways to find them, like I said, is trolling. But once you find them, you want to anchor or power pole down uh, in that shallow water and just hammer that one area. And if you've got a good little spot and nothing changes, that good little spot's going to be good tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Your biggest enemy is heavy rains. Heavy rains that causes that river to rise, causes that water to get muddy, that current to get faster. You can wipe out a good sand bass run from one day to the next. So, go early, go often, catch you hundreds and hundreds of big sand bass this spring. Have a ball out there doing it, and remember, I'm gonna be out there doing the same thing, and I love you.